Welcome to geometry, geometry. Kind of like paintball, but not the same thing. What we gonna do is learn some math. It's a whole lot better than smoking some crack. This one time I met a guy. Said he don't like math, so I asked why. He said, man, it's boring and it's hard to do. I'd rather skip class and say I got the flu. Man, that's lame, you sound like a pansy. When you be 40, you be counting on your handsies. So get your head right, stop crying, little girl. We're gonna ride this thing like Depp rode the Black Pearl. <laughs> no, no kids. What's up, children? Uh, today, I'm not here because I'm in Vegas. I'm winning lots of money so I can quit my job. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is, we're going to talk about the next page of notes. It's going to be titled 6-2, Properties of Parallelograms. Okay, write that down. This is notes page 29. Okay, notes page 29. All right, first thing you're thinking of is properties. Okay, you're not old enough to own a house, but whatever. Properties of parallelograms. Okay, this part looks familiar, hopefully. Parallel, that means two lines go on forever, never touch. And it's really, really small. Sorry about that. But it means two lines going forever and they never touch and they got the exact same slope. So, goody gum drops. All right, so we got parallelograms. All right, we already know a quadrilateral is a four sided figure. Okay, so quadrilateral, something like this. Okay, that's actually a very, very ugly drawing. The only place you'll see a worse one is Miss Sanderson's room. Ha <laughs> just kidding. I'm telling her I said that. All right, anyways. So what we're looking at today, we're looking at what makes up a parallelogram, the important things about parallelograms, okay? Okay? If a polygon, which just means that it's got three or more sides, if it has four sides, four-sided polygon, it's called a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral. All right? Now, right now, think to yourself, where's something I've heard quad in? Um, uh, okay, let's see, there's a uh, quad cab. That means it's got four doors, I think. I don't know. Anyway, quad means four, okay? So we call it a quadrilateral, all right? So, a parallelogram, it has four sides. Forget that last sentence, none of that made sense. Quadrilateral. Is a four-sided polygon. You need to know that forever, okay? Forever and ever. Okay? Now, if that quadrilateral, quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides, guess what we're probably going to call that? It's got two pairs of parallel sides. Probably going to call it a parallelogram. Okay, we've talked about it before. The uh, mathematic community is not really known for their creative ability, so they couldn't think of a better name than that. Okay, personally, I would have called it a destructogram, but that's just me. I mean, I just, I'm just saying. I like things that sound neat. Okay, if you want to write the name of a parallelogram, like if you want to say, um, let's draw. Okay, a lot of times you see them look like this. Those are parallel, and those guys are parallel. Okay. It means the opposite sides are parallel. Obviously, you can't have two sides that are like adjacent or touching. They can't be parallel because, I mean, how would you situate it to where they were side by side and never touched? You couldn't do it, okay? So, that's a parallelogram. All right, now, if you want to label it, say it was A, B, C, D, and we want to label that, all you do is, that's ugly, A, B, C, D. You just draw a little parallel parallelogram. Parallelogram A B C D. Okay? Good at gumdrops. Alright, let's look at the main properties of a parallel parallelogram. Okay, these are the main things that we know are true with every parallelogram ever made in the entire world. And I'm talking fun. Alright, so 
Obviously, the reason we call it a parallelogram is because the opposite sides are congruent. I don't know, congruent, that's stupid. Uh, the opposite sides are parallel. That's why we call it a parallelogram. So, opposite sides parallel. Okay? That's the first thing. Okay? Second thing. In a parallelogram. Okay, that's a parallelogram. Yay. The opposite angles are congruent. Okay, the opposite angles are going to be congruent. That means whatever this is, this is also. Oh my goodness. And whatever this is, this is also. Oh my goodness. Opposite angles are congruent. So we've got the opposite sides are parallel. Opposite angles are congruent. Wonderful. Okay? Second thing. Okay? Let's see. Can you see this far over here? You can see that little guy. We'll do it right here. All right. We've got another one. Next thing we know, let's label this A, B, C, and D. Okay, this is a parallelogram. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. It's a parallelogram. The angles, it's called consecutive. Like uh, we've talked about it in class before, in baseball, somebody hits consecutive home runs, that means they're back to back. Okay, consecutive means right next to each other, like one, two, three, four. That's consecutive numbers. Okay, it says here, or it's a property of a parallelogram is the consecutive angles are supplementary. What does supplementary mean? Oh, I don't know. We've only said it four billion times. It means they add up to equal 180. So, B and C. Those are consecutive. That means they're right next to each other. There's no angles in between them. Right next to each other, okay? They are going to add up to equal 180. So angle B plus angle C equal 180. Guess what? There's another angle that's consecutive B. Which one is it? That's right. It's A. So B and A are also going to be supplementary. Now there's another one next to C. Oh my, oh my goodness, it's D. They're supplementary. So angle C plus angle D equals 180. Oh, wait, oh, oh my goodness. There's another angle A plus angle D equals 180. Oh my gosh, this is so crazy. All right, get over it, okay? So the side, the angles that are next to each other, are going to be supplementary, which means they add up to 108. Now, the last thing, all right, oh, never mind, there's two more things, okay? Another very big thing, we're just going to draw it on this, okay? Another one, so start it, draw another one if you want, whatever, you're the captain of your own soul, all right? The opposite sides in a parallelogram, they're going to be congruent, it means they're going to be the exact same, and these opposite sides are going to be the exact same. So if that's 8 and that's 10, I can find the whole perimeter of this thing because I know that that opposite side is going to be 8 as well and that opposite side is going to be 10 as well. So 20 plus 16 is 36, so the whole perimeter equals 36. Don't matter, I'm just saying in case you get a problem like that, it's all the time. All right, now, I was testing you. Did any of you talk? You failed. Write their names down, please. Okay? Anyways, so the opposite sides are congruent. Write that down. That's important. That's very important. So important, maybe. Might be the most important thing you learn ever in your life. Whatever. Okay. Now, also in a parallelogram, last thing, last property of a parallelogram. We know it's parallel. We know it's congruent. We know the opposites are congruent, that they're supplementary, what a yada yada yada. Last thing, the diagonals. Everybody knows what a diagonal is? It means it goes diagonally across that diagonal and that diagonal. We talked about that if the opposite sides are parallel, it's a parallelogram. If the opposite sides are congruent, it's a parallelogram. If the, uh, the opposite angles are congruent, it's a parallelogram. And if the 
course or consecutive side consecutive angles are supplementary it's parallelogram I said a lot of things just there that I think I messed up just look in your book whatever okay last thing about parallelograms these are called diagonals it means they go diagonally across the shape now what they do is they bisect each other bisect means cut in half exactly they're gonna cut each other in half doesn't mean they're congruent to each other it just means that they cut each other in half. That would be the midpoint of that line. So those two are congruent and those two are congruent. If we know this is a parallelogram. All right, ignore this right here. All right. Okay, so we know that the diagonals bisect each other. All right. Good luck and good night. So, in conclusion, let's sum up everything we learned today, okay? We'll just draw one big parallelogram, okay? We're going to know that this little guy right here is a parallelogram. I'm telling you straight up, this is a parallelogram. Everything we know, we know that the opposite sides are parallel. That's why we call it a parallelogram. Makes sense? Of course it does, okay? Goodness gracious. Now, also we know that the opposite sides are congruent. So if that's 8, that's 8. Those opposite sides are congruent. If that's 12, that's 12. Oh my goodness. All right. Next thing we know, the opposite angles are congruent. All right. So that means if this is, I don't know, let's say it's 110, then this has to be 110. Let's say this was a 70, this would have to be 70, okay? Degrees, by the way. All right. Next thing we learned, the consecutive angles are supplementary. Does 110 plus 70 equal 180? Of course it does. Does that equal 180? Of course it does. Does that equal 180? Of course it does. Does that equal 180 when they're added together? Of course it does. You just add all those little guys together. And they all equal 180, okay? Just the ones across. Make sense? Yay. What is that always going to add up to inside, just for future reference? Um, I don't know. 360? I know. Learned that the other day. Okay, Merry Christmas. Last thing we know about these little guys. Just erasing that. Just erasing a little bit of the fluff. A little bit of fluff around the edges. Oh, man. All right. Last thing we learned. Those diagonals right there bisect each other, which means they cut each other in half. Okay, that means that's cut in half. So if that was four then this has to be 4, which means the whole line is 8. All right, let's say this was 6. What's that have to be? Have to going to be, talking like Yoda, that's going to have to be 6 as well, all right, because those are congruent, so the whole thing would be 12. All right, everybody happy with my decision to make that the end? Well, good, that's the end. I made that, by the way.